how Jennifer Goodman's life has changed since discovering CRISPR 10 years ago. Time, Health, Genetics, July 1st, 2020. Jennifer Goodman was uh, staring at a computer screen filled with a string of A's, C's, T's, and G's, the letters that make up human DNA, and witnessing a debilitating genetic disease being cured right before her eyes. Just a year earlier, in 2012, she and microbiologist Emmanuel Charpentier had published a landmark paper describing CRISPR-Cas9, a molecular version of autocorrect for DNA, and she was seeing one of the first demonstrations of CRISPR power to cure a human disease. She was in the lab of Dr. Kiran Musunuru, a Harvard researcher who was eager to show her the result from an experiment he had just finished using CRISPR to treat the blood cells from a patient with sickle cell anemia. What the analysis revealed was something that few scientists had seen before. After using CRISPR, the mutation responsible for causing the patient's sickle cell anemia was no longer detectable. It was a thrilling, thrilling validation of Dudna's work as a co-discoverer of CRISPR, a technology that allows scientists to edit the DNA of any living thing with a precision that had never been possible. In the case of sickle cell anemia, CRISPR spliced out a single aberrant letter from the 3 billion base pairs of DNA in the patient's cells. With a mutated letter gun, the cells would presumably start forming healthy red blood cells that carry oxygen instead of the harmful versions that make the disease so painful for the uh, 100,000 people living in the, with the condition in the U.S. Quote, that was the moment that it really hit me that these patients wouldn't have disease anymore. End of quote, Duda says. Quote, the concept of curing diseases that in the past were manageable at the best was really a turning point. End of quote. It has been 10 years since Dudna and Charpentier published their first paper describing the technology. During that decade, CRISPR has driven innovating thinking in nearly every aspect of life on Earth. Scientists and companies are testing CRISPR not just to treat human disease, but also to improve plant crops and alter the populations of microbes in uh, livestock that contribute to greenhouse gases due to their methane emissions and ultimately to climate change. Drought and pesticide resist more carbon-friendly uh, livestock and uh, lower emission uh, population uh, of gut microbes are all possible with CRISPR. But those are its beneficial applications. As with any cutting-edge technology, the power to edit genomes is a dark side. While it holds promise for curing intractable genetic diseases, it could potentially also be used to impart certain traits, like eye color, hair color, intelligence, or specific physical attributes, which could then be passed on to future generations. Potential application to cells like eggs, sperm, and embryos, where the changes can be inherited, keep Dudna up at night. She has spent the past decade evolving her own thinking about her role as a scientist and as the co-discoverer of an awesome technology that snatches the power of evolution out of the hands of nature, places it squarely into the unprepared arms of humanity. Ten years ago, I was in a very different place, uh, quoting her. I was a biochemist doing uh, curiosity-driven research, which was what led me to working with CRISPR in the first place. I was uh, teaching my classes, educating my students, 
Now, I wasn't thinking in the context of society level implication, legal implication, ethical concerns. Uh, end of quote. She says, quote, nothing I had done in my past work would have fallen in uh, the bucket, but I had to grapple with the fact that CRISPR was different. End of quote. Over the past decade, Dozens of companies have emerged to take advantage of CRISPR to treat human disease, and Dutna's nagging fear about CRISPR even came true. In 2018, scientists used the technology to permanently alter uh, the genomes of twin girls, despite Dutna and other leading scientists around the world having agreed to moratorium on using CRISPR on embryos. Quote, I'm always a little bit worried as more and more companies jump on the CRISPR bandwagon and start clinical trials. End of quote. She says, quote, what if those trials get ahead of themselves and a negative event occurs that sets the whole field back? End of quote. If the first 10 years of living with CRISPR were about working out the scientific challenges behind editing genomes, the next several decades will be about coming to terms with technology's revolutionary power. Dudna has uh, now embraced her role and obligation to lead the right conversation in moving the public, patients, scientists, policymakers to ensure that the changes CRISPR produces ultimately do more good than harm. The technology that Dudna and Charpentier was, uh, who was then at the University of Vienna, first described in 2012, was breathtaking in both its power and simplicity. Then opportunistic viruses insert their genetic material into bacterial genomes using their host to churn out more copies of themselves. The bacteria respond to their own genetic defense. They generate repeated DNA sequences that send it to the viral genomes genes and provide instructions for powerful enzymes that can splice out the intruding DNA. Dudna and Charpentier teams work out a way to apply the same strategy to targeting and snipping out specific portions of DNA in the human genome, namely those containing mutations responsible for genetic disorders like sickle cell anemia. CRISPR is programmed to aid DNA only at certain places operating like a pair of molecular scissors equipped with enzymes that can cut the DNA and the genetic GPS guide made up of the, another complementary, complementary genetic material called RNA that can find the, the designed DNA sequence. The duo won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for developing the gene editing method. But by that time, Dudna, a professor in chemistry and molecular and cell biology at the University of California, Berkeley, was already a scientific rock star. In the decade since she co-published the seminal paper, the number of students interested in logging time in Dudna's lab has ballooned, doing in equal parts to burgeoning promise of CRISPR and to the opportunity to add Dudna's name to their resumes. The Innovative Genomics Institute, IGI, at Berkeley, is Dudna's answer to the profound uh, question raised by the gene editing technology she introduced to the world. The Airy Light Field Facility has collaborative workspaces on each floor equipped with heavily used whiteboards. Every blank surface, including the glass walls of most offices in the building, is covered with scribbles reflecting the brainstorms of dozens of scientists and students involved in the Dudna lab. In order to capitalize in CRISPR promise, uh, quote, I quickly realized very early on that there was so much to do that there was no way my academic lab could tackle it, as she says. Quote, we would have to involve much bigger team, end of quote. She shared her vision for an institute that uh, convinces ex experts from virology, 
genetics, clinical medicine, agriculture, and climate, all focused on finding the most responsible ways to take CRISPR into the real world with the deal. Quote, CRISPR is something that will absolutely have a broad impact, she recalls telling him, and we have to make sure we are a player in that space, end of quote. The promise of CRISPR also means that competition is fierce around every aspect of the technology, including its origin. Soon after Dudna and Charpentier published their paper, Feng Chang, a molecular biologist at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, published his description of CRISPR in eukaryotic cells, which include mammalian cells. That prompted a seven-year-long uh, patent dispute between the institution. Berkeley and the University of Vienna claimed that their scientists came to the CRISPR breakthrough and filled their patent application first, while Broad said that their scientists got the technology to work in eukaryotic cells first. In February, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office finally ruled in favor of the Broad, which could mean that the Broad will collect millions in the licensing fees as CRISPR-based companies since uh, seek legal access to the technology. Quote, the claims of broad patents to methods for using eukaryotic cells, such as uh, for genome editing, are patentably distant, end of quote, the broad said in a statement. But the decision doesn't end the dispute. Berkeley and the University of Vienna have uh, filed an appeal. Dudna has distanced herself from the battle, aside from providing lab notebooks and other documentation to support Berkeley's and University of Vienna's case. But she appreciates that such legal questions are part of the baggage that comes with a groundbreaking discovery like CRISPR. Many people who meet her for the first time ask about it, she says, including students in Berkeley. Uh, quote, the patent officer or judge, do they know the science well enough to be able to understand the nuances of something like this? These are questions I don't have answers, she says. I don't think there is a lot of uh, questioning in the scientific field of who did what and when, because you can read it in the peer review scientific literature and it's dated. I don't lie awake at night worrying about it. I just carry on with what I see coming down the pike. End of quote. Where CRISPR goes next? The first forays into treating human diseases with CRISPR have focused on conditions like blood cancers, in which doctors can remove cells from patients' bone marrow, which produces immune and blood cells edit them with CRISPR to remove unwanted mutation, and then return the uh, fixed uh, healthy cells back to the patient. Dudna's team is collaborating with researchers at the University of California, San Francisco, and the University of California, Los Angeles, to use a similar strategy to treat sickle cell anemia. One of Dudna's several companies that she set up with former students Caribou Biosciences uses CRISPR to edit cancer-causing sequences out of the DNA of immune cells from patients with a variety of cancers, including non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Scientists, including Dudna's group, are continuing to refine the technology by finding ways to edit even more precisely. While CRISPR is effective, it's not perfect at making the uh, type of change that you want to make at the desired position, Dudna explains. Making it so is critical as CRISPR expands into trying to treat not just well-understood genetic diseases like sickle cell, but also more complex ones like dementia and the heart disease that are the result of multiple changes in a variety of genes. If sickle cell, for instance, CRISPR edits out the single mutation responsible for the disease, after which the cell's natural DNA repair mechanisms take over and fix the DNA. 
Now, there's a correct sequence that can produce normal shape and function in red blood cells. But other conditions may require not just removing mutations, but replacing them with more complex, correct sequences so that the cell can make the proper proteins or substances. That's where ensuring that CRISPR is more precise and able to deliver the appropriate correct DNA to the right place in the genome. And the right cells is important and still elusive. Another of Dudna's former student, Ben Ox, co-founder of Scribe Therapeutics, if you are to refine how CRISPR can edit DNA more precise. We are really fixated and focused on how to eventually enable the use of CRISPR in the human body, says Ox. His team has pioneered a CRISPR system relying on a different enzyme or DNA cutting molecule that the original CRISPR platform and animal models of ALS, the system seems to edit the targeted mutations more efficiently and contribute to a longer lifespan for the animal than, uh, than the original CRISPR platform. That will hopefully be the case in people as well, as more scientists find ways to use CRISPR directly inside patients' bodies. In 2014, uh, Dodna co-founded Intelia Therapeutics, and its scientists have tested a CRISPR-based intravenous treatment for transtiretin uh, amyloidosis, relatively rare disease involving the buildup of abnormal form of a protein in organs and along nerves, causing damage to the heart and nervous system. The treatment tested in a small number of patients successfully edited the target genes in the liver and led to an up to 93% drop in blood levels of abnormal protein and a month after the infusion, the company reported in June. This first demonstrated of the safety and efficiency of CRISPR-based editing in the patient's body and how to take something that is incredibly powerful in the test tube or petri dish and make it start to behave like medicine, says Intel President and CEO Dr. John Leonard. Transforming environmental health. It's not just humans who are getting the CRISPR treatment. The world's biggest crops are too. On the first floor of the IGI, little uh, sprigs of rice wheat, corn, banana, cassava, and other plant species are sprouting in the plastic containers uh, tucked into dozens of refrigerator-sized incubators. The plants are all seedlings representing the future of agriculture, drought-resistant rice, pesticide-resistant wheat, and better-tasting tomatoes. Scientists are searching for ways to boost yield and help crops withstand punishing environmental conditions that would otherwise kill them. Mayang Ji Cho, director of IGI Plant Genomics and Transformation Facility, is trying to uh, suss out the genes responsible for making plants susceptible to certain pests or fungi, or those that make them dependent on abundant and consistent rainfall and tweak them using CRISPR to become hardier and able to produce higher yields. The work is still in the early stages, but uh, Cho is uh, proud of a rice variant the team has modified with CRISPR to genetically reduce the amount of pores that the plant uses to exchange carbon dioxide and water with the environment, thus making it more tolerant to low water conditions. He has shipped the seeds to Colombia for farmers to plant in the first field test of a drought-resistant crop. The list of features that Cho is hoping to edit with CRISPR is long and continues to grow. He's working on knocking out a gene that could be responsible for making wheat vulnerable to fungal disease. He is growing corn that could be genetically resistant to herbicides allowing farmers to control pests without harming the crop. 
is also using CRISPR to remove genes responsible for producing uh, solanin, a neurotoxin in potatoes that helps protect the tuber from insects and disease but can cause vomiting, paralysis of central nervous system in people. This group is also working with Inolea, French seed company, to develop sunflowers that produce oil with a better consistency and tweaking the tomato plant ethylene gene, which is responsible for controlling ripening to develop a more delicious fruit. Solving agriculture's biggest blades wasn't part of Dumas' initial agenda, but CRISPR can improve not just human health, but also the health of the planet. Quote, it's an unusual experience being able to bridge all different disciplines of science, from plant biology and commercial agriculture to people working to treat human diseases. Yet all of those problems are potentially treatable or can be addressed using CRISPR, uh, she says. End of quote. Uh, editing genes could also play a role in what many world leaders see as humanity's most urgent problem, climate change. As Dudna sees it, the most daunting challenges of the climate crisis boil down to carbon emissions, and achieving net zero will ultimately depend on cultivating plants that can pull more carbon from atmosphere and raising animals that release less. At IGI, Jill Benfield, Berkeley professor and microbiologist who first introduced Dudna to the odd phenomenon of bacteria that was CRISPR, is currently exploring ways to edit genes in millions of bacteria living uh, in uh, microbiomes like the cow gut in order to manipulate the amount of methane, a uh, potent greenhouse gas they release. It's still early work, but could provide one way to reduce the effects of climate change. CRISPR's dark side. Well, Dudna finds such ex explorations, uh, quote, fun. She is also keenly aware of CRISPR's power. Soon after she published her paper, she had nightmares in which Adolf Hitler came to her to learn about how CRISPR works. In their own hands, the power to edit genes could lead to medical abuses and even eugenics, in which people could select for virtually any feature, including those involved in physical appearance and intelligence. In 2018, her fears about using CRISPR to tweak human genes were realized when she received a shocking email from a Chinese scientist, uh, He Jiankui, uh, who told Dudna that he had used CRISPR to change the DNA in human embryos, and that as a result, twin girls uh, had been born, the first people on the record to have their genomes permanently altered by CRISPR. Up to that point, scientists had agreed to a moratorium on such experiments because of deep ethical concerns. Quote, it's hard to explain my emotions on seeing that, end of quote. Uh, says the quote, it was a feeling of horror because this was the scenario that we, the scientific community, had been thinking about and trying to mitigate against, and uh, now it actually happened. How do we manage that? End of quote. Years later, uh, there is still no easy answers. In the controversial experiment in China, the twin's father was HIV positive, and uh, he edited a gene believed to contribute to resistance to HIV in effort to protect the children from the virus. But the Chinese court determined that he manipulated consent documents and questioned whether the parents were fully informed of the nature of the study. Ultimately, he was jailed for violating medical regulations with his unorthodox experiment. What was so horrifying was realizing that this was an experiment that had been done on human beings that had never even been done in animals, said Dodman. Quote, it's bright back Mengele, and the what she adds referring to Nazi physician who experimented on prisoners 
including twins at Auschwitz during World War II. I thought, oh my God, I don't want uh, the technology I am involved in to be doing that, end of quote. After initially feeling that she was not qualified to tackle the bigger social and ethical implications of CRISPR, Ludna realized that with the remarkable discovery also came responsibility that she couldn't shirk. Quote, here we are sitting on this powerful technology and more and more scientists are adopting it, yet most people outside of the scientific community have no idea about it and what it can do. End of quote. She says, quote, what do I do? Call my senator? I have no idea. There was nobody to ask. End of quote. So she turned to other Nobel laureates, including David Baltimore, uh, who had struggled with similar ethical questions after he and others discovered how to manipulate DNA to recombine its sequences in different ways. It was a crude, earlier version of gene editing with much less control than CRISPR efforts, but which has contributed to drug treatments and the promising vaccine candidates. Dudna, with the help of other leading scientists, including Baltimore, uh, drafted guidelines for how and when to best apply CRISPR and agreed on a moratorium in 2015 on using CRISPR for the type uh, of embryo editing that uh, he conducted. But uh, without a way to enforce such guidelines, Dudna believes that CRISPR's next battles will be in public opinion and legal settings, as the public court and the regulatory bodies confront which applications of CRISPR cross ethical and cultural lines. We are going to have to forge a path and figure it out, she says. Quote, this powerful technology allows us to change the essence of who we are with one and if we want to. I am not a hyperbolic person, but I am trying to alert people to the fact that this is really going to change things. End of quote. The future of CRISPR. Dudna adamantly believes that CRISPR and editing genomes, whether human or otherwise, can be beneficial while changing DNA does have serious consequences if it applied only to individual genomes and not to cells, in humans at least, that can be inherited. She views CRISPR as a type of molecular accelerant to the process of natural selection. CRISPR makes it possible to get to a genetic condition or change genes in an organism faster than we were to wait for evolution to do it, she says. Quote, when we are dealing with something like climate change, where time is of the essence, it means we can do things faster than waiting for a natural process to take its course. End of quote. That could also apply to pandemics. When her lab researchers were desperately to continue their time sensitive work during the early COVID 19 lockdowns in 2020, Part of Dudna's team at IGI developed a diagnostic COVID-19 test for all Berkeley staff, students, and faculty in just three months. By September, the lab was federally certified to provide diagnostic tests, and they began testing frontline workers and underserved communities in the Bay Area. Using CRISPR-based strategies not to edit uh, genomes, but to identify pathogens, IGI scientists were able to quickly detect new variants by picking out changes in SARS-CoV-2 uh, 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 genetic sequences, and in May, uh, the lab launched a new assay that can detect which variant of the virus patients are infected uh, with when they test, test positive. The pandemic provided an opportunity for CRISPR to flex its muscle as a tool for potentially tracking and detecting new infectious disease culprits, as well as variants uh, as COVID-19 continues to spread. 
Such surveillance would allow public health experts to better predict where and when to dedicate additional testing and treatment resources. Dudna recently reread her landmark 2012 paper and admits that while she has a sense that, that it was, quote, kind of a moment, end of quote, she could not have envisioned the uh, profound ways CRISPR is now transforming. CRISPR is making us rethink genetic diseases. It's now possible to contemplate curing rather than treating for a lifetime. Genetic conditions like sickle cell anemia or vision problems like macular degeneration. The dialogue about climate change has also been redirected, given the possibility that CRISPR could help address major sources of organic carbon emissions the source in the gut microbiomes of animals. There is no turning back the clock on the incredible scientific sovereignty that humans now have over their world. Edudna is keenly aware of her responsibility in making sure that power is wielded through thoughtful collaboration. She is talking to the US Food and Drug Administration about CRISPR-based therapies for human diseases that appear to be coming fast and is reassured that the agency is trying to stay ahead of the thorny questions editing the human genome will pose. However, while Dubna is optimistic that the transparency and open dialogue that she has advocated for the past 10 years about CRISPR will push the technology in the right direction, she is also aware that it will be impossible to completely control CRISPR. It wasn't until a few years after publishing her paper that the enormity of what she had discovered and the weight of responsibility that came with it finally hit her. Dudna was in a Napa Valley attending one of the first ever CRISPR meetings and had arrived a few hours earlier, earlier so decided to take a hike. As she reached an overlook with a spectacular view of the valley, quote, I suddenly felt profoundly sad, end of quote, she said. Quote, I should have felt happy. I was in a uh, gorgeous uh, setting and was fortunate to be there, but I hadn't really had a moment like that to myself in a long, long time. I reflected for the first time that there was a before CRISPR for me and uh, an after CRISPR. My life has forever changed, and so had the world. End of quote.